All right, and now for a build I actually love. Arc inside of the level up helmet with the level up amulet. We are looking at a level 32 Vol Arc and it slaps. Unlike my half-ass attempt at a auto bomber or the exsanguinate, this one plays good, feels good, and is good. In order to make this good, I went pretty heavy into auras. As you see, I have uh, Wrath, Grace, Petrified Blood, Haste, Clarity, Vitality, Precision, and Herald of Thunder. And I had to grab a bunch of these nodes here in order to fit those in there. Got one for, for Grace, and I got one for Wrath, and then I have plus 10% Effect. That squeezes all the auras in there. I'm missing a lot of crit that hurts me real bad not to be able to grab this spell crit here or this spell crit here. I grabbed this one so I can get plus 15 to maximum shock effects, which gives me 24 crit multi there and 100% crit chance to shock to enemies. And then I also had to squeeze in plus 12% mono reservation efficiency, but it's also pretty nice because I needed that 20 int anyways. So that is the build. There's nothing extra special. I'm using one step ahead and just two lightning cluster jewels. This build is very inexpensive. Helmet, one to two divine. Amulet I got for one. You can pick up two void batteries for anywhere from five to 25 C, depending on how good you want the quality. A four white socket was four divine or five. I can't remember. Maybe five. And then this glove here is basically free. And you just run whatever else you want. Very inexpensive build. And the power is quite nice. But more importantly to the power is the way the build plays. Turn up my Shinobi 3 soundtrack and let's do this. It plays fantastically. Oh, and... I got my absolute favorite flash scroll. This is my favorite movement speed flash scroll. Tier 1, recharge recovery and 25% reduce effect. And then tier 1, increase movement speed during. This makes it so your movement speed flask is up more of the time, but it's less powerful. And for me, that's better because when the movement speed gets too high, I kind of just start getting most of the sickness anyways. So for me, it's like perfect. Like this amount of movement speed is absolutely perfect for the way I like to play. And then this gameplay style is also perfect. I don't have to be ultra precise with my mouse click because Arc will just kind of target what's in front of you. But you're not as brain dead as like an auto bomber where you're not even clicking anything. It's kind of like the best of both worlds between a self-targeting projectile skill and an auto-targeting skill like Arc or Exsanguinate. And this kind of playstyle is absolutely fantastic for me. Now this has just been ARC. I've just been running through with my level 33 or 32 ARC, can't remember, and killing things super easy. Haven't even used Vault ARC yet. So now I'm going to incorporate Vault ARC, which is absolutely incredible. There goes the Vault ARC, cleared up that whole side there. And I have a little secret with the Hydrosphere, which all by itself can clear all the maps. I've never really used Hydrosphere very much, but it is extremely fun to throw Hydrospheres around. I do not know why I have not utilized this in anything other than cast when damage taken. Self-casting Hydrospheres feels excellent. So this could just be considered a Hydrosphere build or an Arc build, whichever one you want. And if you want to combo the two, you throw the Hydrosphere, you hit it with the Arc. You can alternate between the two. Hydrosphere, arc, arc, arc. Arc, arc, arc. Turn into a freaking walrus right there. It's fast. It's smooth. It gets the job done. I like it a lot, lot. I, I might even have a slight crush on it. I think, yeah, I have Curse on my Teleport, which I rarely curse anyone. I have no good uh, resistance stripping mechanics. This build can be tuned so much higher than it is. 
but it's still plenty good as is. Defense layers are just uh, good enough spell suppression and evasion with uh, a wind dancer. That's pretty much your only defenses. You're sitting at a 60% chance to evade with flask pop, 70%. So you can get hit, then run away, and then get hit. But for the most part, if you're just doing regular mapping, you're clearing faster than you are getting hit. And all the damage, um, a big chunk of the damage you're getting is just flat damage from the assassin class. So you don't even really need to scale too much. Just scale your power charges, and you're good to go. And you can pretty much run almost anything in this setup, but so far Arc has been the one that is actually a build. I mean, I got Gloom Shrines, again. I keep ruining all my fun because it makes all my builds look better than they are. But this build's actually good, so. Uh, if you're good enough, it could probably do uber content. Um, you're gonna die on a regular elder fight. You don't have enough life regeneration to sustain yourself when he automatically grabs you. So that'll kill you. So you're definitely gonna get a death when you do that boss battle. Actually, you might be able to kill him before he grabs you the second time, maybe. I don't know if that's a force grab or not. I can't remember. Red boss uh, would be a nightmare. You probably can't do uber red boss unless you can dodge absolutely everything. I'm not hitting vault arc enough. You know what? I'm gonna put vault arc on my left click. Vault arc. So I'll just cast it as I'm running around automatically. Not getting enough play time. There you go. Hit with the Vol Arc right there. And one of the good things about Arc is it feels just so good to cast because the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it sounds. It's just, it, it's a very enjoyable skill to use. And to actually have enough damage to kill stuff with it is real nice. Ball arc in there. One tap most enemies. Rares usually take two taps. Damage over time is the biggest weakness. Burning down is burning ground is extremely dangerous. So if you want to build this and you want to make it a little more stable, you'll probably want to find burning ground immunity somewhere. I keep forgetting I want to do a blight map. Because Blight is a mechanic that this does very well.
I didn't read enough of those. Great. No enlightening immunity. batch of boys they got spell block ah got got that was likely a spell that did not get suppressed. Looked like an attack, but it's probably a spell. Oh, that guy's too tough. Should have dropped a portal. I'm gonna have to just ignore him and take my treasure and run. He's got some nasty life regeneration that I can't cope with. Take my treasure and run. Take my treasure and run. I don't have Corrupted Blood immunity, um, but I am using the Pantheon for Corrupted Blood. Corrupted Blood Pantheon and the uh, Damage Over Time Chaos Damage Pantheon. I pretty much always grab that one. 10% less damage over time, and damage over time being my uh, least favorite mechanic in the game. It's just great. Assuming it even works. I don't think anyone's probably proper te properly tested it. And it probably reduces righteous fire damage, so someone has to have tested it. But I imagine people said that about taunt, and taunt wasn't adding the damage it said it was supposed to. It is now. They updated it last week. Oh shit, even uh... Frostblink does enough damage to kill most packs. So if you want to Frostblink around, you need that as well. Uh, you can use Lightning Conduit, but I find Lightning Conduit to be unsatisfying as a skill. It doesn't feel good to use for me. Cause you're not aiming anything, you're just hitting the button and it throws down Lightning Strikes. It's kind of hard to feel the Lightning Strikes happening. Probably why it's so good in... Uh, Castle on crit or castle channeling setups. You don't have to aim it, it just hits wherever. It's kind of hard to track when you've casted it. I'm gonna do that co uh, Kotex I just found. Or whatever it was. Good, uh, good boss example. Of 
Cortex, I think, is the big boss one. This first time fighting a boss with this build. I've only done it for mapping it just a little bit. I really like it for mapping. Uh, we'll see what it's like for bossing. It is something I gotta test out. And I find it best to test for the very first time while recording. Because it's more interesting to see, you know, how a build's gonna turn out before you've actually fully tested it. In my opinion. For all I know, it's not gonna have the defense layers required for the boss, and it's just gonna fail over and over. Pretty sure it's got the defense levels. God, that screen clear is so good. Yeah, I, I like uh, Vol Arc on left click as well. Instead of, instead of just, just trying to time it for the perfect moment, you just cast it more frequently. So you end up just holding onto it for far too long when Vol Arc is up. At least I do. End up hardly ever casting it, but if I put it on my left click, it just constantly casts his Vol Arc. Damage over time right at the start of the battle. That was rude as shit, boy. Yeah, it's just pretty good damage with, uh... Level 33. God, stop it! Is it always an instant damage pool at your feet? I can't remember. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I never know how to dodge. I think I have to go behind him there. But I knew that death was imminent. And that's why there's a portal. I don't do these boss contents enough to have them memorized. Oh, damage over time pool. As you see, uh, my eyes were where my mouse was, so... Couldn't see the damage over time. Really hope they add something to just like scream at you when you're in a damage over time pool. Or, a novel idea, just remove damage over time pools from the game. You know what I mean? No one's gonna be sad if you remove damage over time pools from the game. It's not a sink. Why is this following me? Oh, yeah, sometimes it's a part of the synthesis maps. There's not a single soul who's gonna make. Oh, man! Damage over time, pools are gone. Yeah, it looks like every time. Almost dead by the time I fucking notice it. One death, not bad, not bad. Wait, is it over? I feel like it's over. Perfect roll. Oh, garbage. That's the opposite of a perfect roll. That's the worst roll you can get. I'm throwing that on the ground. That's just disrespectful to me. Yeah, it's instant, instant pops, man. It feels great. It feels great. Uh, the haste really adds to it. I was playing without haste for the first little bit, and I was like, man, I gotta squeeze haste in.
Right, I'm gonna do a map with City Square will be fun. I don't like them stealing my power charges, but whatever. Stuff, scare, scare. We are looking for Belight. We'll do Legion as well, because Legion, this build is really good for Legion really good for blight. We do one of each. Excellent for Blight. They had to give me a shock at me and sons of bitches. Golden oil, all right. I don't know if those are worth anymore. Yeah, this this build passes every vibe check for me. Whenever I'm just uh, vibing about playing this game, we got a TV show on or listening to a podcast, just chilling. This build is perfect. Absolutely perfect for that type of play style. Might even be pretty good for the Sanctum. Maybe. And let's take a look at Legion. 
Hit it with a ball arc. And most of the Legion is done. If, well, all of the Legion. That was a Legion in an absolutely terrible spot. What the shit was that? Let's pull some horror shit right out there, right? Yes, it's... Alright, let's test the survivability. Actually, let's do some bossing. We know it's incredible to map in. We can't fight Shaper. I got a lot of Shaper fights. Let's find out how it does with Captain Shaper. Anoint him with the Maven. Oh, this boss will kill me. Hate this boss. That boss will wreck you if you don't have good regen, and I don't have the best of regen. Why is it so dark?
obviously there's far better single target damage skills than this. But at this price point, it competes. It competes. But for mapping, this is this is probably one of the best builds you can get. Just under Xanguine. Arc might look cooler. And Vol Arc is definitely cooler. And this would be grade A on an Inquisitor as well. Probably better on an Inquisitor than a, an Assassin. Inquisitor is probably a big part of why the Assassin doesn't get as much love. When it comes to being a crit champion, the Assassin may seem like the obvious choice, but the fact that the Inquisitor ignores elemental resistances on crit makes the Inquisitor a complete beast in that department. I really like Hydrosphere. Especially a six link Hydrosphere. Yeah, it handles Shaper pretty easily. I'm not the base, best uh, Shaper fighter. Far better at Shaper than I am at something like Maven, but uh, I'm sure I'm probably worse than average. And it, I'm just going right on through, nice and smooth. Well, when I say worse than average, I mean like worse than average you'll see on YouTube. If you took all the POE YouTubers and you lined them up, I'd be in the bottom 50% in terms of raw skill. Not that Path of Exile is really a game of skill. But you can see a little bit of skill when it's there. Hit with something dirty, something nasty, something scary. Oh shit. Speaking of nasty, dirty, and scary, Shaper gave me his big thick beam. I took it and didn't even see it. Felt it though. Almost deathless. He got me in the end. Right, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad at Bossa. I thought someone changed my hideout. It's the weekend, you know, I'm allowed. Sit this with the corruption. Nothing good. I just want to see if Elder will kill me. I'm pretty sure Elder will kill me when he grabs me, but I am kind of curious to see if I got the damage to circumvent that.
Yeah, if you do enough damage, you circumvents the auto grab. Okay. So you need a damage check or a defensive check. That is not bad game design. I was shitting on it before, but that's actually pretty clever. So that way if you really want to play Glass Cannon, Glass Cannon is totally a viable game option. You just have to get very Glass Cannon-y. You can't half-ass Glass Cannon. Every deep counts. Not typically my playstyle, but I wouldn't call this Glass Cannon. You have some pretty good defensive layers. And you're not quite cannon enough. Haven't checked the deeps yet, but it's feeling like maybe two to three million. Maybe more on a 65% shock. God, it just feels so good to play though. This is a build. Definitely a build. The last one, not a build. The one before that, not a build. This one, this one's a build. Alright, let's see what it can do on a simulacrum 100 map. Let us do... I think I like stagnation, if I remember correctly. I think the boss is a terrible chaos boss. Of course, that stupid beast. That should be fine. Let's go to my thousands of these. Let us do... Let's get some... Deliria. And two currencies, why not? 100% Delirious. What this will tax is a little bit of the damage, but mostly the survivability. We'll get to see how survivable the build is. If I can clear this with say three deaths, this is a very successful build for me. One death. Definitely is pretty squish. Damage is a little low for a 100% Delirium Farmer, and so are the defenses. I'd say the max you want to go for Delhi is probably 60, which does mean the damage is probably under 5 million, because 5 million is when these start to feel a little good. And most of that is probably just uh, the fact that I have very little in terms of stripping elemental resistances. Wish I had an Inquisitor leveled up, because this would feel good on an Inquisitor. Feel real good.
Caca. Unsuccessful in terms of survivability for Delirium 100. Uh, my advice if you want to try to take it to Delirium 100, up your damage. Don't worry about your defenses. I'm dying mostly because I'm allowing these guys to survive for too long. For this build, the best defense is a best offense. And there's plenty of ways to up your defense. If you look at the gear and the POB, you'll, you'll see it's just pretty minor. Nothing spectacular. Real slow reaction time. Do you guys see that? I took the hit and then I just kind of stood there. And took then took another. Oh, and for the record, if you guys don't know why it's uh, killing me so much, it's this uh, ability right here. 20% more attack damage taken if you've been hit recently. And with the Lyrium 100, I'm not clearing out the riffraff quick enough for them not to hit me twice in a row. And also, I'm not reacting fast enough. With that skill enabled, you really have to watch your health pool. And as soon as you get touched, you gotta bounce out. Wait four seconds, and then bounce back in. It's a pretty active playstyle to use that, which is good. For me, anyways. Keeps me on my toes. She gets the stank of Righteous Fire off of me. Righteous Fire leaves a mark. A lazy playstyle mark. Portal's done. Let's run a blighted map to wash the stank. No, let's do... Let's just do a regular map. What's a good map? I see a strand. Oh, silo. I think I like silo. And let's give it a blight. The blight is super good. Just wanted one, but okay, give me all of them. And then Legion was also super good. Uh, we went Shinobi. Now let's go. That'll be a good one. Why is it so quiet? I don't remember this. Can't get my nostalgia vibes if I don't remember it. I must I must only know the first one.
that's that good good. So good for both of these league mechanics. It just clears it out. Probably a smart idea to get a more distance way to apply the curse instead of that teleport. I'm gonna keep the teleport because I don't mind a death from here to here. It is pretty dangerous to have to teleport under your enemy to apply that curse, and that curse does a lot of damage. probably want to try to do something a little more automated than Hydrosphere. Hydrosphere is awesome, don't get me wrong, but I do so much damage it's pointless for me to cast Hydrosphere when I'm regular mapping, so that I don't quite remember on bosses to cast it all the time. Map's great, though. Oh, Adroxus. Adroxus is required. Every time I test the build, I must run Adroxus. You got that, the Coxus.
get out of here. We don't need that mess. Guys, we got like life regeneration. We don't need none of that. Get out of here, life regen. Having no links on it. Arc feels pretty damn good. Just blast through. Hitting them chains. guys just a little bit Kinda of sounds like Doom. Like a slowed down Doom. It just goes to a slightly different place. Dan it. Dan Dan it. And then it's Doom. The very last part of the bar just goes to the wrong place. It's kinda of tripping me out. supposed to be a resolution there and there's no resolution. Ah, oh, got me. I didn't evade it. I didn't block it. I didn't dodge it. I took it. I took it hard. And now I gotta walk all the way back as punishment. You know what? No, I fucking don't. I have so many of these maps. I'll just grab another. I don't want more life though. It's a misrepresentation. I don't think he hits with any resistances. That spell suppress. And increased accuracy though. That's right, that's fine. I'll remember to drop a portal this time. I played this field for like uh, eight hours last night. Put it on my laptop, played it on my couch. Watching TV with the lady. It was just, it was just a chill time. It is just smooth. It plays like a dream. As long as you don't mind a death or two, it plays like. Actually, you can build it to where you don't get a death or two. Just build a little bit tankier than I did. Maybe even pop a shield on. Or just go more damage, so nothing even looks at you. As you see, for the most part, I don't die on regular T16 maps. Oh, this boss is going to be hard for me. Any damage over time bosses are hard. But I cleared it. I guess I should clear the delirium. I'm 
he was gonna get me there. Knew he was gonna get me. We gotta see what the Dell's like. We got this Space Harrier OST going. We gotta see what the Dell's like with that bad boy on. This is Delvin music right here. Delvin music, baby. Let's get in the mind. It's Delvin Music, baby. Let's get in the mines. good in the Dell. It's obviously not like a top tier Dell build. Those all have a lot of life regeneration so you can go in the dark. I don't think this will provide you too much protection in the dark whenever the dark happens. But it's got great clear, especially if you're trying to level because you're going to kill most of the enemies. Most of them aren't going to get by. A lot of times when you're going through the Dell, a lot of these guys become stragglers arc is going to clear them all out. I guess I could show a secondary web uh, boot option. I don't like it because whenever you run out of power charges, you're a little slower. So anytime you die, it feels kind of like a, a bit of a punishment because you die and then you're slower. And another reason they're not very good is the fact that you only have 3,000 life. It gives you a bunch of life regeneration for your power charges. And if you have low life, like I have low life, it's just not that beneficial to get a percent life regeneration versus flat life regeneration. And since I already have vitality, it's not that beneficial. Take a look at that other pair of boots I was talking about. It's gonna drop a few of our stats down, maybe even to unacceptable levels. I don't put, think I put in a rare cube, but apparently I did. We got Ennis. 
Replica Anna's. Oh, this one's got Spell Suppress. So I spent a little bit of coin on this. And let's check my defenses. All my resistances are good. Let's put this in one of my good items pat categories and let's run. Let's just do Delve again. See how slow I am? But these bad boys are going to give me 5% movement speed for power charge and I get 9, which is 45% movement speed. And that's like 4.5% life regeneration. Plus, uh, you know, that damage. So that is a pretty good option. Oh, I remember where I lose my spell suppression. One of the reasons I don't like it. The soundtrack is fucking ridiculous. Alright, buddy. Alright. Jesus Christ. Oh man, I, right here. 15% chance to suppress spell damage if equipped in helmet, body armor, gloves, and boots all have evasion. And since these do not have evasion, that node is now bumped. And I don't really have a good option for getting spell suppressed, which now puts me at 49% at lucky damage, which puts me in a pretty vulnerable spot. So at this point, I'd have to find a, another way to get spell suppression. It's a little bit there. I could path into here and drop four nodes out somewhere. I might be able to drop these out. That 8%. Nah, I think I need this for casting. You can do the 15% effective shock, this whole shock block, to get tankier if I really wanted to. Or these four here. These four here are pretty strong nodes. I think I'm just gonna leave it. Just wing it. Let's give me. 5% more life. Or 6% more life. That's a little too fast for me though. Just a smudge. I'd probably, if I played for a long time, I'd probably have to remove the boots. You guys could probably handle this speed easy. You're probably looking at it and, oh, this ain't very fast. But for me, this is moving a little fast. It's moving a little fast. It's just begging for a little bit of motion sickness. But it is smooth. It is smooth. It feels so good to play. Arc is a very well designed skill. It's weak at the moment. It is super weak, especially in comparison to Exsanguinate. But it can still slap, and on top of it slapping, it feels great to play. That's the thing about like a spark build. I don't think spark feels great to play. You're not really aiming it, you're just hitting the button. I'm playing you're not aiming arc either. It seems silly that spark isn't a fun playstyle for me, but arc is. That's just the way it goes. Arc feels awesome, looks awesome. Spark does not. What else could we do? Should we try a Sanctum? Nah, we'll be here too long. Let's do... Oh, never mind. I think I'm super low level with this character. Let's see what level I am. Let's try these out. It's gonna be a little rough with the evasion that I have. And the low spell suppression. Fire damage, lightning. Oh, why is it forcing me to do this one? Maybe I already started it? I did. I forgot to look at what level I was. I 
like I got exploded on. bitch. I'm super low ranked. Nothing I can show you here will be impressive. Alright, let's just get back out of here. I'm gonna do one more map. I kinda just wanna map all day long. Let us run. It would be difficult. I think Minotaur might be a really difficult fight for this build. Minotaur is kind of a dick sometimes. And he's gonna be doing physical damage, which is the most dangerous for this build. Yeah, he's gonna take a ton of less damage. I don't like the spell suppress reduction on me though. I'm already low enough as it is. That's just gonna be a lot of deaths. Okay, that's fine. Hexproof is gonna be real rough. Butter. Oh, this asshole's resistant. I'll still whoop his ass. Guys, to make me want to play it on an Inquisitor, though. Way more damage. And instead of doing the electricity uh, curse, you can do an Assassin's Mark, which is going to give you more crit chance and crit. Yeah, Inquisitor's the way to go. Tankier, more damage. Maybe even a superior section on the skill tree. Maybe.
And he got me. I figured I'd try to let him hit me once to see if I'd evade it. I did not evade it. I'm gonna walk the distance for this one though. He injured my pride along with my body. And it, you can see there's only eight monsters left. This build clears the maps extremely effectively. You have very few stragglers, which sucks if you suck and you die a lot and you have to go through the map again. Like this. And there's definitely no room for cast on death, portal on death. Except uh, I guess you don't even need the six link really with the Hydrosphere, but the Hydrosphere is kind of hot. It's kind of hot. Not gonna lie. NGL. Alright, let's play the game that a lot of people like to play called Path of Building. Let's turn this down because I'm going to be talking a little bit. Right there should be fine. Path of Building. Let's see what kind of damage numbers we're getting. I'm guessing 4 million. That's my guess. Official guess, 4 million. I like to watch the skills pump up, so let's do... Herald of Thunder, including full deeps. Hydrosphere, including full deeps. Vol Arc, including full deeps. Enable Arc, disable Vol Arc. And then let's go to config. We are always on low life. Big ol' damage boost there. We have power charges. Huge, huge damage boost from the power charges. 500,000 to 2.8 million. We have Arcane Surge. I guess it gave us that by default. We have shocked enemies recently. There is one rare next to me. If the enemies are on low life, they are at 5 million. If they are on full life, we are at 5 million. So our first lightning arc is going to hit for 5 million damage and hopefully that brings them to low life in which the second hit is going to hit for 5 million damage but if we're fighting a boss we could take the difference between 5 and 7 million so about 4 million which is pretty close to where I, I go never mind we have 65% shock all right I was wrong it's a lot more it's a lot more than 4 million uh, you won't always be at 65 but we are at 65 a lot at minimum we are at 50 so we are looking at 6 million damage. Man, that is some pretty good damage. Oh, it's going a little higher because we do have Invenerate active. Oh, but it's going to drop because we got to put it on the boss. 4 million damage. I was right all along. I knew it felt like 4 million. And it feels like 4 million. And there is plenty you can do to pump this up. But as I have it now, this is very inexpensive. Void Battery, Crest of Desire. These amulets are real cheap here. Let's just uh, control D some of my gear real quick. 10 Chaos to 20 Chaos, same for that. Four Divine for this bad boy. You could even get one with some really nice corruptions on the top, plus one to skills, plus 50% damage. Whatever you want, you can make it. Let's check this guy. Probably one divine. One divine to two divine. You're probably looking more like two for that eight. This guy here. Oh, I haven't updated, but it's only a. I bought it for a divine. You can get it for a divine or less. Uh, I got the 15% reservation efficiency, which is why it was a full divine. But you can get them down in the 50 C's. And these are just your everyday basic O rings. Nothing too special. Cast speed, resistances. The belt's solid. That's pretty good too. The minions is a bit of a dud. 
This isn't even really option uh, mandatory. You can replace this for anything you want. You can even replace this if you want, if you don't want them to pop. But it's nice to pop and the 25% increased effect of shock. Super nice. This probably is best in slot. If you want to do drop wrath, you could probably drop wrath and not lose that much damage. But I like having wrath. Petrified Blood. Haste is excellent because you don't get any good at ca uh, cast speed. Yeah. The build, the build is solid. I'm going to go w one more simply because we got a little bit more of this uh, Space Harrier soundtrack to go through. Do we have like a... Ooh, Alleyways is perfect. It's a little nasty, but we should be able to do it just fine. 116. Brutal. In fact, I want to get a uh, some scarabs on it. Actually, no, no, no. I don't want scarabs on it. I want to pump up the rarity. Let's make this rare. I don't want an abyss. I don't really care too much about a breach. Definitely don't care about Elder. And let's get Shaper. Where's Shaper? Oh, a big dog. And let's get one of these guys in there too. Let's hope I get. I did get Delirium. Would have been kind of lame if I didn't get Delirium, but I do get Delirium on most maps. Some good clear. Real good for this content, too. Man, it's just a it's just an awesome build. It's so strong. It, in relation to its cost, it is so strong. I feel like I have to keep saying that. Someone's going to pop in there and say, this build's not that strong, and they're actually going to be 100% correct because it really isn't that strong. But for the minor price that it costs, it is very strong. And if you want to talk about inexpensive, it is just using one gem for the arc. Everything else is pretty optional. So you don't have to worry about getting those expensive awakened spell echoes or expensive Awaken elemental damage support or whatever. Whatever expensive awaken gem you want to throw at it. And most importantly, it's just straight vibing. It is straight vibing. Except for when you stand in damage over time. Like a doofus. I was representing good too. Did, did I forget to cast my auras or did he just one shot me? Like a bitch. He one shot me and made me drop my loot. That's what he just did.
Damn, what the hell? Hasted. Gains random charges. That dude don't mess around. He, he just, he's slaughtering me. Not even let me get my power charges up. I get a lot of those. I always pick them up to uh, make sure. Oh shit, they might actually patent this music. No, probably not. This is just what auto played. Final Fantasy VII is a great, great soundtrack. Final Fantasy Remake, not so much. Just like the game, the soundtrack is bloated and full of instruments that don't belong there. It's almost like a bunch of cats fighting. No one instrument gets to uh, shine because all instruments are crammed together all at once. It just feels fantastic to play this build. All right, I finished the Space Harrier OST. I have finished gushing over how much I like this build. We got the POE, POB set, and that is all I have.